The St. Charles County Veterans Museum is a 501c3 nonprofit business. The museum would not exist without the donations of our generous community. Your donations ensure the museum continues to share and preserve the stories of our veterans. Would you like to be part of something special? To donate, visit sccvetsmuseum.org and click on Donate. The Dog Tag Podcast may at times cover sensitive topics including, but not limited to, suicide, abuse, violence, severe mental illness, sex, drugs, and alcohol addiction. You are advised to refrain from watching or listening to the Dog Tag Podcast if you are likely to be offended or adversely impacted by any of these topics. Neither the company, host, director, or guests shall at any time be liable for the content covered causing offense, distress, or other reaction. The information, opinions, and recommendations presented in this podcast are for general information only. The primary purpose of the Dog Tag Podcast is to educate. The views, information, or opinions expressed on the Dog Tag Podcast are solely the views of the individuals or guests involved and by no means represent absolute facts. The Dog Tag does not accept responsibility for their views or comments. Turning 65 or new to Medicare? Joe Rumbolo's Medicare Made Easy works hard for our veterans. Did you know you may be eligible to enroll in a Medicare plan and keep your VA health, drug, CHAMP VA, and TRICARE for Life benefits? We offer a range of different plans from a large number of top-rated carriers. We can find a plan that will best suit your needs. A Medicare Advantage plan specifically designed for veterans and spouses who are entitled to VA health benefits, CHAMP VA, or TRICARE for Life may offer extra benefits to you that you may not otherwise receive, like dental, hearing, and vision coverage, over-the-counter products allowances every quarter, one-way trip transportation to the doctors, Part B premium give back, fitness programs, personal emergency response system. Please contact Joe Rumbola today at 314-753-0792 for any of your Medicare needs. Welcome to the Dog Tag Podcast at the St. Charles County Veterans Museum with your host, Jason Galvin, and our guest today in studio, the Medicare guy, Joe Rumbolo. Joe, welcome to the podcast. Well, thank, thank you for being here. Thank you, Jason. I really appreciate the opportunity to come back and uh, and speak with you about Medicare. So, Joe, I'm so glad that you're here, and uh, I think it's really important that... Um, you know, we talk about Medicare uh, with our veterans as time goes on because things change, and you're the guy. So uh, tell us a little bit about your, your background, um, starting from, you know, where you grew up, and then uh, your veteran kind of story, and then we'll go from there. All right, terrific. Um, first of all, thank you so much for allowing me to come back uh, and do this podcast with you again. Uh, the last time was a great time, and I, I really enjoyed it. Um, done a couple events out here with you at the Veterans Museum. And I, I hope to continue that. Um, I grew up in St. Louis, uh, right around the hill, and uh, you know went to St. Louis University, got a degree in business, uh, major in accounting, and uh, then immediately went on the road with my band. <laughs> so, uh, quite a departure. Yeah. And I was out on the road with my band. I had a band called the Spirit of St. Louis, uh, rhythm and blues, rock and soul, horn band. And, uh, you know, we were all going to become rock stars. Yep. Like, like everybody else that goes out on the road, we were going to become rock stars. We came close, but, um, you know, close is only, uh, it only counts in harsh shoes, you know, so, <laughs> but, uh, well, it was a dream that you had probably and that, uh, fulfilled, you know? Yeah. Well, we were out there for about 15 years. I mean, we gave it everything that we possibly could give it. And, uh, you know, we, we knew when it was over. But uh, it was it was great fun. After that, I went into the uh, the business side of the music business. Uh, I was lucky enough to do some tours with uh, with the Moody Blues and with the band Chicago. Okay, you know, and that was uh, that was fun. And after that, uh, kind of got burned out on the music business and went into the food business. My dad, I grew up in the food business. My dad and my uncle had a wholesale and retail grocery store and meat market on the hill, and I grew up in that store. My brother and I. 
my cousins, we, uh, we grew up there and, uh, you know, looking back on it, we had, we had a lot of fun in that business. I ultimately went into uh, a similar business. I had a, a deli sandwich shop, uh, an Italian specialty store on the Hill, uh, did that, did that for a while. Um, I guess, I guess, uh, throughout, throughout my life, you know, I would, I would do these different things and then I would come to the end of it and say, okay, I'm finished with that. What's next. And after that, uh, I became a facilitator and, uh, a speaker. And, uh, I also was a radio show host did that. And at one point I thought, okay, I'm finished with that. Now it's time to look for my retirement career. You know, some people don't, some people just retire and, you know, sit out on the front porch or, you know, water the lawn or go to Florida. But, um, I guess I just wanted something to do. And I ended up in the insurance business. Uh, specifically I started out with life insurance. Didn't really care much for that. My wife saw an ad that United Healthcare was looking for uh, telesales agents for, uh, for Medicare. And uh, I checked that out, went and interviewed for the job and jumped into Medicare because when I aged into Medicare, I really knew nothing about it. I uh, took a crash course and started working with United Healthcare. Uh, absolutely loved it and uh, worked my way into being a broker representing all the major companies. And uh, here I am. Oh, I love that. Uh, why don't you take us back just a little bit further? I know that you, we covered a little bit of your, your uh, background there when it comes to your professional career. But what about uh, your stint in the uh, Missouri Air National Guard? Tell us a little bit about that. So that's very interesting. I, uh, I was, it, I, I, well, I had my name when I was in college at St. Louis University. Uh, I, had, uh, I had my name on every reserve unit in the area. You know, because I didn't know what was going to happen uh, after I graduated. I got a phone call from the Missouri Air National Guard while I was still at St. Louis University. It was really interesting. So here I was at, at, at SLU, um, majoring in business with an area of specialization in accounting. I get a phone call from Missouri Air National Guard, 131st Tactical Fighter Wing out at Lambert. And they said, hey, we got a slot open for you if you want it. I said, great, doing what? Well, you'd be a weapons mechanic. <laughs> and I said, okay, great. I'll, you know, I'll be a weapons mechanic, whatever that is. So I, you know, I th- I'm all set, ready to go to basic training down at Lackland Air Force Base. And a friend of mine calls me and he said, hey, so I got a call from the 131st Tactical Fighter Wing. Now, this is a guy, wasn't, wasn't in college, knew nothing about accounting, business, none of that. I said, so what, uh, what kind of a slot do they have for you? Well, they have a slot open in the bookkeeping department. I said, oh, great. Do you want to trade? <laughs> <laughs> but, we, but we couldn't do that. So I ended up working in the, for six years, I ended up working in the, uh, the weapon shop um, as a weapons mechanic, specifically loading bombs on airplanes. So one weekend a month, I'm loading bombs on airplanes. I actually ultimately went back to school. Uh, to finish up my degree in business with the area of, of specialization in accounting. Uh, so I don't know. I guess that's the way things go. This gentleman knew nothing about any of that, no business background, no bookkeeping, accounting background. And so uh, one weekend a month, he's, he's wearing his, uh, his, uh, his khaki uniform and going sitting in an office you know, and I'm wearing fatigues and I'm out on the flight line. <laughs> <laughs> it's strange how those things happen, but I'm, I'm sure it was a great experience. And I know that having that, you know, military experience, that background gives you kind of, you know, an insight into what veterans um, need, especially as they age into Medicare. So tell us how you tell us how you got into the Medicare part, especially helping veterans with Medicare as a broker. Well, once I, uh, once I left United Healthcare and uh, became a broker, um, there was one company in particular that was a pioneer, and I'm not going to mention them because um, I don't want to, you know, don't want to be biased. But there was one company that was a pioneer, and we started to learn. We started to learn about the veterans' plans, and the veterans' plans are a little different uh, because they have to coordinate with the VA or with uh, 
surviving spouse, spouses with CHAMP VA or with the retired uh, military with TRICARE for Life. So we all, we, first of all, we want to make sure that we are complementing the, uh, the veteran uh, or, the, or the retiree or the surviving spouse and not complicating their health care. And so the first couple of years, it was a little, it was a little tricky, but uh, we felt the people that, at the agency that I'm with, we felt that it was really important to really work with, with the veterans. Um, and so, and we kept advocating with the insurance companies to really improve the plans and really give the veterans some great benefits. Uh, not that everyone does not, everyone deserves them, but we especially thought the veterans especially deserved these extra benefits and, and the really good medical coverage. And so we kind of took it upon ourselves at, at our agency to, uh, uh, to have these uh, veterans-only plans be a specialty for us, and uh, you know we've done we've done a lot of these. We've done I've done a lot of these all across the country. I'm licensed in Missouri, Illinois, Nebraska, Iowa, Minnesota, Louisiana, Florida, uh, Mississippi, Tennessee. Uh, so I'm licensed in all those states, and we have actually run veterans campaigns in in all those states. Uh, so I've. I had the opportunity to speak to a whole lot of veterans and uh, really sharpen up our skills regarding these plans. And uh, well, tell us why it's why it's different for a veteran when it comes to Medicare versus your your regular Medicare recipient. Okay, well, first of first of all, do do you want me to go into a, a little brief? Sure, uh, like a Medicare one hundred and one. Sure, why don't you give us a Medicare one hundred and one and then tell us what what the difference is? Okay, uh, well, first of all. When a person ages into Medicare or first becomes eligible for Medicare, there's actually uh, three ways that you can go. Uh, so let's just start with this. Uh, first of all, you have to have Medicare Part A. And if you have actually worked and paid into the system uh, for a total of 40 quarters or 10 years, um, you get Part A at no cost. Okay. Well, they tell you it's no cost, but you paid into the system for 10 years. Part B, Part B, on the other hand, there is a cost. First of all, Part A covers your hospital. So anytime you would go in the hospital, it's Part A that's paying for that. Part B covers your doctors, covers uh, durable medical equipment. There are some prescription drugs that are covered under Part B. Those prescription drugs would be like injections in a doctor's office, uh, be infusion therapies that you, you might have, um, those are those are covered by Part B. Chemotherapy uh, is covered by Part B. There are some drugs uh, that are uh, that that you would take at home using special equipment that is also covered under Part B. Um, so together, uh, Part A and Part B that's called Original Medicare. Part B does have a premium every month. Uh, this year, the minimum premium is one hundred and seventy four dollars and eighty cents. And that Part B premium is based on your, your income. Got it. So there are some people that may pay way more than that. But on, on average, it's $174.80. So Part A and Part B together is called Original Medicare. And Original Medicare is going to pay 80%. That leaves a 20% responsibility for you. And it also means that you have to have, you are required to have a standalone prescription drug plan. Okay. All right. Now, in this uh, particular area, uh, the prescription drug plans, the premiums on those range from, there is one that is a $0 a month premium all the way up to, I believe, $116. And that's based on the formulary, and that is what drugs do you take and what plan covers those drugs. So you got your Part B premium, you got your 20% that's your responsibility, and then you have your standalone prescription drug plan. So what do you do about the 20%? Well, you get a Medicare, you can get a Medicare supplement plan. And today, in today's world, uh, the Plan G is the best one that's available. Uh, plan G is going to cover the entire 20% that Medicare does not cover, with the exception of the first $240 uh, on the Part B side. So you have a you have a Part B deductible two hundred and forty dollars. After that, 
that supplement's going to pay the entire 20%. So that's 100% coverage for you. You do have a premium every month. Um, that's based on your age. You have that premium every month. Might be $140 a month to start with. You can count on that premium going up every year. It's going to go up a little bit every year. Um, but you're going to have complete coverage. You're going to be able to go to any doctor in the country, any hospital, any medical provider in the entire country. There's no networks. The only, the only network is if they uh, accept Medicare, they have to cover you. They have to accept the supplement because the supplement has to cover whatever Medicare covers. So if Medicare covers a particular thing, the supplement has to cover it. And a plan G, a plan G, a plan G from one company to the next to the next is exactly the same. The only difference, the only real difference is in the premium. And I do remember you telling me at one time, I think maybe a little bit earlier today, that <clears throat> it's really important to understand your Medicare benefits and enroll as soon as you're eligible because you might be penalized if you don't. Can you talk a little bit about that? That's true. Um, and then we're going to get to the other side of Medicare right after that. Yeah, uh, if, you, uh, if you don't enroll when you're eligible, you will be penalized on your Part D, which is your prescription drug plan. Uh, there are some people that think, well, I don't take any prescription drugs. Why should I enroll? And they get uh, their 5,000 years down the road, and all of a sudden they have to take prescription drugs. Well, the problem is is that five years down the road, that's a total of 60 months, six zero, 60 months, and you are penalized 1% per month for every month that you do not have that Part, uh, that part D, that prescription drug plan. Um, it's 60% of whatever the average cost of a prescription drug plan is, uh, and you're penalized for life Wow! with that on the prescription drug side. On the Part B, as in boy side, there are uh, people who, who uh, well, there's veterans. Unfortunately, there's veterans who uh, they don't really, they don't need Part B while they're, they're getting their prescription drugs through the VA uh, are there, and their medical services through the VA. But at some point, they're going to need that Part B. They're going to need that complete coverage. They are penalized 10% per year for every year that they do not have Part B uh, from the date that they're eligible. Wow. I mean, you might be 7, 8, 10 years in, and all of a sudden, you well, you know, I think I need Part B, um, and you're going to be penalized uh, 10%, per, 10 per year. Um so you really have to be on top of that. Um, I, I just want to say just for, for, for a second here, I want to go to the other side of Medicare. We talked about the MedSup or the, or the Medigap plan. But the other side of that is the Medicare Advantage plan. And what happens, I'll, I'll do this quickly and then we can move on. With the Medicare Advantage plan, the way those work is that the insurance company actually takes over Medicare's responsibility. So instead of Medicare paying the 80%, the insurance company pays that. So you're getting that 80% from the insurance company with the Medicare Advantage plan. The Medicare Advantage plan also includes at no extra cost the prescription drug plan. You're still going to have co-pays, but you don't have a premium, an extra premium. So that's going to include that. And then the insurance company is going to pay a lot of that 20% that is your responsibility. And usually with the Medicare Advantage plans, the premium is going to be zero, um, but you're going to have some co-pays. Uh, you're going to have co-pays. If you go to your primary, it's going to be zero. But if you go to a specialist, depending upon which plan in this area, it's going to be between $20 and $40, $45 a visit. You're going to have a copay for ambulance, emergency room, any of the medical side. You know, if you need to have, have an MRI, there's going to be a copay. But the premium is usually going to be zero. And you're going to have the extra benefits. You're going to have that dental vision, hearing, the over-the-counter products from, from the pharmacy. Uh, this kind of a plan, uh, it is managed care because there are networks. And uh, with the HMO, uh, you do absolutely have to stay in network uh, in order to have coverage. The PPO plans, the Medicare PPO plans, the Advantage plans that, uh, that are the PPOs, you can go out of network. Uh, it's not as flexible as some people think. Some people think with the PPO, they can go to any doctor or facility that they want to go to. Uh, 
that's not quite right, the provider has to agree to accept it. You know, so you need pretty much need to check visit by visit. And the co-pays are going to be higher with the PPO plan. So you're going to do a little bit of homework, but yeah. yeah. So with the Medicare Advantage plans, you know, I mean, it just depends on which, which direction you want to, you, you want to go in. Um, you know, if you know how to use the Medicare Advantage plans, you know, they'll, they'll work great for you. So you get to choose Medicare Supplement, Medicare Advantage, but that's the whole, that's the whole deal right there. So those are, those are your choices. And so maybe let's talk a little bit about how that impacts veterans. And if you have like a case study that uh, you're able kind of to describe, maybe, maybe we can go that route too. Okay. So with the veterans, with the veterans, usually the veterans that are, um, you know, when I'm talking to a veteran, first thing is where are you getting your medical services and your prescription drugs? So first uh, let's start with the VA veteran says, ah, you know, I was in the army for six years. Um, I'm 70% with the VA, 70% disabled with the VA. I get all of my medical services and my prescription drugs through the VA. Um, I like it for the most part, but, uh, you know, unless you're 100% with the VA, you don't get any dental. You don't get the dental for free. Uh, you do get the vision. You know, you don't get um, any over-the-counter products or anything like that. But, uh, you know... Um, the dental, I'd really like to have dental. Okay, well, I have a plan for you. And it's one of these, uh, they're called Medicare Advantage only plans because they do not include prescription drug coverage uh, because the assumption is you have coverage through the VA. So with those p- particular plans, usually usually that veteran will, will enroll in that plan because they're really not planning on using that medical side because they're getting all their services through the VA. And usually if they go to a civilian doctor or provider, the VA sends them and the VA pays for it. You know, the reason why I'm saying that is because uh, they can use the plan. They can use the medical side of the plan. They might have to do a little jockeying around if that civilian doctor writes a prescription. Okay. But it can be done. But usually the veterans, the veterans will sign up for that plan because of the dental, uh, the extra vision, the extra hearing, the -the over-the-counter products, and most importantly, every one of those plans will pay the veteran back every month toward their Part B premium. So that Part B premium this year is $174.80, and they're going to be getting money back toward that. All right, so they'll take less out, and the veterans, they like that. You know, so they get those extra benefits and that money. With CHAMP VA... Uh, these are surviving spouses that, that have CHAMP VA and with TRICARE for Life, and these are the, the veterans that are the retired military, uh, it works differently. That plan, that Medicare Advantage-only plan, works with CHAMP VA and TRICARE for Life like this. Uh, that plan is going to pay 80%. They're, they're the primary payer. And then CHAMP VA and TRICARE for Life are going to come behind it and pay any copays that are left. All right, and um, that's going to be as that's going to uh, uh, give a, a zero dollar premium for the uh, person who has Champ VA or Tricare for Life. So it's a zero dollar premium, and they're going to have the benefit of all those extras. They're going to get the dental that they need because they have no way of getting dental. They're going to get the vision. They're going to get the hearing because they don't. Unlike the VA, there's no vision or hearing with Champ and with Tricare for Life. So they're going to have. That they're going to have the over-the-counter products from the pharmacy, and they're going to get the benefit of that pay, that Part B give back every month. You know, now they're going to have to stay in a network because the plan is going to have a network. Some of the plans are HMOs, some are PPOs, but they still have to stay you know within that within that network. Uh, if they do that, the coverage is is really great. And of course, with the major carriers. With the major carriers, you know, usually the networks are pretty broad. You know, uh, I have had, I probably had two people out of all the people that I have enrolled in these plans. And I, I mean, I've done, I've, I've done veterans, uh, you know, pretty much, especially Louisiana, Illinois, Missouri. I've done a lot of veterans. 
Um, I've probably had two complaints. It sounds to me like, you know, your your clients or your customers, those guys, those veterans that come to you, 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 you give them a unique experience based on what their need is. They say, hey, this is what I'm looking for. You kind of interview them on what's most important in their in their uh, world themselves, and you find something that's going to work for them. Does that sound like I'm getting that right? You know, not only with the veterans, with, but with everybody, uh, with everybody that comes to me, um, <clears throat> I'm always looking for what is the plan that best suits your needs, okay? Uh, and that's why being a broker is, is really the way to go because I do represent all the major carriers. And, uh, you know, United Healthcare might be the best, best way for you to go. Their plans might be the best way for you to go. But the, but the next guy or the next person, maybe Aetna's the way to go, you know, or Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield. Uh, the thing about it is, is that uh, with that, we, um, we have those choices, you know, and that's, that, that's why, uh, you know, I absolutely love being a broker because, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to take any, you know, uh, shoving square pegs in round holes. You know, I want to find exactly what is the best plan for you. I mean, sometimes, sometimes one plan may not have uh, as good of extra benefits as the next plan. But there is a particular thing. There may be ambulance. There may be hospital co-pays. There may be uh, something else that is really appealing to that particular person. And so we'll go ahead and get, get that person enrolled in that plan uh, rather than just saying, okay, here, one size fits all. It does not. And it sounds like you uncomplicate something that is daunting for a lot of people that they don't know you know, how to navigate Medicare or this time in their life. And so you make it very easy for them. You give them kind of the lowdown and what to expect, how it works. You don't just give them a plan and leave them. You, you, you give them the details, you give them what's going to work for them. I I love that about you. Well, you know, and that's, that's really the goal. Um, That's actually one of the biggest reasons when the opportunity to get into uh, Medicare, um, when that, when that first came up, I thought at, at the very least, I'll learn something about Medicare uh, you know, at the most, I will understand it so that I can actually speak to my contemporaries about it and clarify the Medicare. Uh, because when I first aged into Medicare, I knew absolutely nothing. I mean, nothing. And um, I mean, I, I walked into this blind. Um, you know, and I really wish I had had someone who could explain it clearly to me. And I thought, okay. Um, you know, and once, of course, once I got in it and I thought, man, you know, I, I think I understand this, you know, and I can, I can talk to folks about it. And I've had many people, uh, you know, not to toot my own horn, but a lot of people say, wow, you know, you've explained this to me better than anybody else that I've ever talked to about this, you know, well, that's my goal, you know. So do you have any case studies that uh, maybe you could describe of, of, you know, some, somebody that came to you with a need and maybe you were able to you know, kind of position them in a, in a way they, they weren't even expecting? Well, yeah, uh, there are, there are plans, there are plans in the marketplace. Uh, they're called dual special needs plans. Uh, the dual special needs plans, these are for folks who have both Medicare and Medicaid from their state. And, uh, most states have dual special needs plans. Illinois, for some reason or other, has no dual special needs plans. But uh, so we'll, we'll, let's just talk about Missouri. Um, it depends on what that person really wants and needs. Now, these dual special needs plans, these are the ones that have those food cards. You know where you see all these ads everywhere saying, you know, you can get $3,000 a year, you know, to spend on food, you know, and, and uh, over-the-counter products and all these different things. Well, The food cards come with the dual special needs plans. There is one regular Medicare uh, Advantage plan that does offer a small food card that's not a dual plan. But the ones that usually offer the food cards are, these are dual special needs plans. And I did have one gentleman, uh, one of my clients, and uh, of course for the new year, I I saw what plan uh, had the largest food card. And I called him and I said, hey, uh, 
you know, we have a plan coming up. All the medical side is, you know, just as good as what you have. Um, you know, the extra benefits are, you know, they're all pretty comparable except for the food card. Uh, there's a food card out there that's $95 more than the one that you're getting. And he said, does it cover potato chips and lunch meat? I said, I don't think so, but I'll find out. I've checked. No, they don't cover it. It only covers healthy food. The plan that he's with does cover lunch meat and potato chips. And he told me, quite frankly, he said, I am not a healthy eater. I said, okay. I said, but this is $95 more. I said, you could move things around. He goes, no, I said, I think I'll just stay what I have, with what I have. He said, I'm, <laughs> I'm really, it's been really good for the past year. And he said, I really like it. Okay, it's your choice, whatever you want. You know, I'm here to give you what you want. You know, I thought, you know, I would take the $95. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, move a couple of things around and pocket a couple of that. Sure. Yeah. So let's let's talk a little bit more about um, about veterans. If a veteran is aging into Medicare and they and they want to reach out to you so that they can take advantage of these, you know, what would what would that look like for the veteran? What would that look like for any customer, but specifically a veteran? How would they get a hold of you? And then from there, what would they what would happen? So they would call me, or text me, contact me in some way, and we would have a preliminary conversation. Uh, you know, your you're aging in whatever, whatever month it is. All right, let's talk about this. Do you have part A yet? Uh, do you have a Medicare card? Uh, or, you know, have you been delaying your part B because you're still working, uh, and you're on your company plan? Um, you know, what, what exactly is your situation? We'll figure that out. Okay. You need to sign up for part B, you know, or you need to sign up for A and B. So let's get you signed up and get you all set with your effective date and then let's go to work. Let's, let's find out your situation. Let's check your coverage. Let's see who your doctors are. What are your medications? Uh, of course with the veteran, we don't have to check the medications, but we do want to check the doctors. Uh, is there anything in particular that you're really looking for? And so we'll gather, gather all that information. And then I go to the plans that are available in the area and I find the plan that will best suit your needs. And, you know, then we'll, you know, we'll start narrowing things down. And then when it's time to enroll, we'll get you enrolled. We'll either go with the Medicare supplement, you know, or Medigap plan, or we'll go with the Medicare Advantage plan, whichever, whichever you think is going to work the best for you. And like I said, it's all available and I represent all the companies. Are there any common obstacles uh, for somebody that's aging in uh, that, they may need to overcome, or maybe there's a fear that they, you know, of, of lack of knowledge or anything like that, that may be common that uh, would keep somebody from reaching out that you can kind of, um, you know, help them move past that obstacle, I guess is what I'm trying to say. What, what I would say, what I would say is get educated, learn about these things, <laughs> get educated from people who know what they're talking about. I'm not talking about just me. There's other people. There's a lot of other people that, you know, that know about Medicare. I don't know everything there is to know because I learn new things daily. You know, um, I would, <laughs> I would not talk to anybody who says I know everything there is to know. Um, the reason why I say this is because I was talking to one lady and she was in Florida. She lives in Florida, and you know, she's asking me quite different questions. And every time I would give her an answer, she'd tell me I was wrong. And I said, uh, who's, tell, who's giving you this information? She said, well, you know, I, I have friends that are on Medicare, right? I said, and they, they tell them they know. I said, okay. I said, so just who are these people? She said, well, she said, I get together for coffee with these people three times, three mornings a week, and we talk about this. And they know because they're on Medicare. I said, when's the next time you're going to have coffee? And they said, she said, tomorrow morning. I said, great, tomorrow morning when you get together with your friends. I said, I'd like you to ask them a question. I'd like to ask, I'd like, when you start talking about Medicare, I want you to ask them how many states they're licensed in to enroll people in Medicare. And she hesitated, and then she just cracked up. She was laughing. She goes, okay, I get it. I said, <laughs> I said look, 
I said, I want to tell you, I said, first of all, I'm on Medicare, just like you, or just like you're going to be. And um, when I aged in, I said, first, and secondly, I I know I'm older than you are. (laughs) I said, but when I first aged in, I knew absolutely nothing about Medicare. And I, so, uh, you know, and, and I just, you know, I, I tried to do some work to, you know, do some research on it, but I, I was just totally confused. I said, so you need to talk to somebody that knows what they're talking about and, uh, and not listen to the hearsay. You know, there's going to be people out there that are going to say, don't ever, don't ever enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan. Medicare Advantage is terrible. There's going to be other people saying Medicare supplements, those are terrible. That, that premium keeps increasing. And, you know, I've talked to people that are paying $400 a month for their Medicare supplement plan and, and all of that. So there's always pros and cons to each kind of plan. And um, talk to the people that do this every day. You know, if you don't feel comfortable with a certain person, don't continue the conversation. Just, you know, talk to people until you're comfortable with somebody. Yeah. But talk to somebody that's in the know. And it sounds like, you know, when you're, you know, in this situation, when people are talking to their friends about what they like and don't like and what they think they know and don't know, their unique fit may be completely different than the person that's asking them the question. And that's why it's important to talk to someone like you, like yourself, who has the experience that has the palette to choose from for their unique fit. And I think that's, I think that's one thing that I've noticed is that if people are afraid to ask, they're going to ask their close friends instead of somebody that knows what they're talking about. And that's kind of limiting for their options well, in their pocketbook. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. Well, you know, I mean, yeah, there are, there are several things that, that enter into that. You know, first of all, one thing might be, you know, cost. You know, maybe people don't have the money to, you know, to pay premiums up front like that. And they're going to go with a $0 premium plan and they're willing to go along with the, with the, uh, the co-pays. And by the way, by the way, one of the things that the Medicare Advantage plans do have, they all have what's called an annual maximum out-of-pocket amount. Okay. Uh, I want to mention that because, you know, I don't want, I don't want to leave that hanging out there like, okay, there's these co-pays and, you know, it's going to be endless co-pays. It really is not. Um, especially in our area here, you know, Missouri, Illinois, the maximum out-of-pockets are really low. And the way that works is you're going through the calendar year and you're paying a copay for, you know, this specialist, that specialist. Uh, you take an ambulance ride, you go to the emergency room, you go in the hospital. These copays are all thrown into a bucket and that bucket is called annual maximum out of pocket. When that bucket gets filled up, then that plan starts paying a hundred percent. So at the beginning of the year, you know, X amount of dollars this is all I have to pay out of pocket, you know, so you can kind of take a look at that, uh, you know, especially at the very beginning and say, well, I have to pay this much premium for this, for the uh, Medicare supplement plan and the prescription drug plan, but my maximum amount of pocket is this, hey, you know what, I think it's worthwhile to go one way or the other, whichever way you feel, you know, but at least the options are there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you've shared a lot of knowledge, a lot of um, opportunity. So just, just tell us how someone can get a hold of you. Give us kind of who you work with, you know, how they can get a hold of you by phone, how they can get a hold of you by email. All right. So um, the agency that I'm with is called Comprehensive Benefits, and we have an office in Soulard. Um, and um, you can call me directly, uh, 314 314- seven five three zero seven nine two uh that's my phone number you can text me as a matter of fact uh the way to get in touch with me uh the fastest way would be to text me uh my email address is joe rumbolo it's j-o-e-r-u-m-b-o-l-o joe rumbolo at gmail.com um like i said the quickest way to get in touch with me is to text me. Just say, hey, this is so-and-so. Uh, I'm going to be aging into Medicare. Please give me a call. Awesome. What's the um, 
what's the turnaround time for someone to take advantage of a plan? All right. So uh, if if they're aging into Medicare, it's going to depend on when are they first, when are they eligible. Uh, we can start working. If we're going to work Medicare supplements, we can start working with them six months before they're eligible. Medicare Advantage, three months before. Um you know, and we'll do everything with them from getting them signed up for Part A and Part B all the way up to, you know, are we going to do supplement? Are we going to do Medicare Advantage, you know, and then go ahead and get them enrolled. Um, if you age in, say, for instance, you age in March the 1st, if I enroll you sometime in February, eligible, uh, it'll start on it'll start on March the 1st, right, when it needs to. So the month before, um, I actually enrolled somebody yesterday for a February one effective date. So it's it seems very smooth, very yeah. you know, very time um, appropriate for someone to get coverage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is there anything else you want the listeners to know about what you do or what they should know about Medicare before we sign off of the podcast tonight? If you have a group of people, if you have a group of people, and you know, say you and your friends and you're all either aging in or you're already on Medicare, and you're, and you're confused, and you're still confused about it. You don't know, what does my plan cover? Uh, is there something out there that might be better for me? Uh, you know, I, I got a phone call from, from somebody, and they enrolled me, and I didn't even know who they are, and I don't even know what I have. Call me. You know, uh, if you have, a, like I said, if you have a group of friends, let's talk about that. Let's put the group together, 10, 12, 15 people. I'll come and I'll, I'll, we'll talk about it. I'll, you know, we'll do, we'll do a Medicare 101 and I will answer every question that you have. Awesome, Joe. Thank you so much for uh, being on the podcast tonight and sharing that great knowledge. I think it's, like I said, really, really important for people to, to hear this, especially our veterans. Um, And I know that uh, you use it yourself and uh, you're a great advocate. So thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Well, Jason, thank you very much for having me here once again. I really appreciate it. I will come here anytime. Awesome. We're going to go ahead and sign up for the Dog Tag Podcast from the St. Charles County Veterans Museum. Turning 65 or new to Medicare? Joe Rumbolo's Medicare Made Easy works hard for our veterans. Did you know you may be eligible to enroll in a Medicare plan and keep your VA health, drug, CHAMP VA, and TRICARE for Life benefits? We offer a range of different plans from a large number of top-rated carriers. We can find a plan that will best suit your needs. A Medicare Advantage plan specifically designed for veterans and spouses who are entitled to VA health benefits, CHAMP VA, or TRICARE for Life may offer extra benefits to you that you may not otherwise receive, like dental, hearing, and vision coverage, over-the-counter products allowances every quarter, one-way trip transportation to the doctors, Part B premium give back, fitness programs, personal emergency response system. Please contact Joe Rumbola today at 314-753-0792. For any of your Medicare needs, the dog tag is brought to you by the St. Charles County Veterans Museum. The museum is a 501c3 nonprofit business. Do you like our podcast? With your support, we'll continue to bring you great programming. If you'd like to donate, go to sccvetsmuseum.org and click on Donate.